It has to do with our association to people, our association to places, our association to things and times and events. We don't exist in the associative centers in our brain that reaffirms our identity and reaffirms our personality. For the average person in the world who lives life and considers their life boring or uninspiring is because they've made no attempt to gain knowledge and information that will inspire them. They're so hypnotized by their environment through the media, through television, through people living and creating ideals that everybody struggles to become, that no one can actually become in terms of physical appearance and definitions of beauty and valor that are all illusions, that most people surrender and live their life in mediocrity. And they may live that life and the soul may never really, their desire may never really rise to the surface, so they may want to be something else. But if it does rise to the surface and uh, they ask themselves if there is something more or why am I here? What is the purpose of life? Where am I going? What happens when I die? They start to ask those questions. They start to flirt and interact with the perception that they may be having a nervous breakdown. And in reality, what they're doing is that their old concepts of how they viewed their life in the world start to fall apart. We're in completely new territory in our brain. And because we're in completely new territory, we're rewiring the brain, literally reconnecting to a new concept. Then ultimately, it changes us from the inside out. If I change my mind, will I change my choices? If I change my choices, will my life change? Why can't I change? What am I addicted to? What will I lose that I'm chemically attached to? And what person place, thing, time, or event that I'm chemically attached to that I don't want to lose because I may have to experience the chemical withdrawal from that. Hence the human drama. Amanda, it's Bob, and I'm just calling to say I hope that you can come tonight. I really want to see you. I, uh, I really want to talk to you. I know we can work things out. It's the only planet in the Milky Way that has habitation that is steeped in enormous subjugation of religion. You know why that is? is because people have set up right and wrong. If I do this, I'm going to get punished by God. If I do the other thing, I'm going to get rewarded. This is a really poor description that tries to map out a path in life for us to follow, but with deplorable results, because there really is no such thing as good or bad. We're judging things far too superficially that way. Does that mean you're in favor of sin and licentiousness and depravity? No. It simply means that you need to improve your, your expression and understanding of what you're dealing with here. There are things that I do, and I know they'll evolve me. There are other things that will not evolve me, but it's not good or bad. And there's no God waiting to punish you because you did one or the other. There is no God condemning people. Everyone is God's. 
At the same time, God is, um, is the sort of placeholder name for those parts of our experience of the world which are somehow transcendent, somehow sublime. I have no idea what God is. Yet I have an experience that God is. There is something very real about this presence called God. Although I have no idea how to define God, to see God as a person or a thing, can't, I can't seem to do it. It's kind of like asking a human being to explain what God is, is similar to asking a fish to explain the water in which the fish swims. God is a superposition of all the spirit from all things. You are a God in the making, and you have to walk this path. But someday, you have to love the abstract as much as you love the condition of addiction. The only way that I will ever be great to myself is not what I do to my body, but what I do to my mind. So if we're consciously designing our destiny, and if we're consciously, from a spiritual standpoint, throwing in with the idea that our thoughts can affect our reality or affect our life, because reality equals life, then I have this little pact that I have when I <clears throat> create my day. I say, I'm taking this time to create my day, and I'm infecting the quantum field. Now, if is in fact the observers watching me the whole time that I'm doing this and there is a spiritual aspect to myself then show me a sign today that you paid attention to any one of these things that I created and bring them in a way that I won't expect so I'm as surprised at my ability to be able to experience these things and make it so that I have no doubt that it's come from you capable of millions of different things that uh, that people just really should learn that how incredible they actually are and how incredible their minds actually are and that not only do they have this unbelievable thing within their head that can do so many things for them and can help us learn and can actually change and adapt and it can make us something better than what we actually are and it can actually help us to transcend ourselves that there may be some way that it can actually take us to a, a higher level of our existence where we can actually understand the world in a deeper way, where we can understand our relationship to things and people in a deeper way, and we can ultimately make more meaning for ourselves in our world. We can show that there's a spiritual part of our brain, but it's a part that we all can have access to, and it's something that we can all do. We have to formulate what we want and be so concentrated on it and so focused on it and have so much of our awareness of it that we lose track of ourselves. We lose track of time. We lose track of our identity. And the moment we become so involved in that experience that we lose track of ourselves, we lose track of time, that picture is the only picture that's real. And everybody's had that experience when they've made up their mind that they've wanted something. That's quantum physics in action. That's manifesting reality. That's the observer in full effect. Your consciousness influences others around you. It influences material properties. It influences your future. You are co-creating your future.